Hi, it's Barry. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about what I learned setting up my planner archive system. There are lots of benefits. So you saw my new vinyl planner in my last video. And I got really excited using this and thought of another use. Yes, I have to admit, I have two more on order. I've learned a lot of trial and error. Okay, maybe more errors. I have some tips and hacks for you so that you can set yours up with ease. And stay tuned because I'm going to talk more about this, including the dashboard that I have available as a freebie for you. I was thrilled when Cloth and Paper had this archive box in our subscription box a few months ago. Luckily, they also had some in the subscriber exclusive, and I was able to pick up some additional ones, which I'm using and loving at this point. Thing about them is you can have them laying flat. They can be on a shelf. It looks like a book, or you can stand them up and you can have them on a shelf facing in this direction. So my first use of the archive box was to start to archive some of my planners. So first up, I have a TN in a B6 size. Um, this was in my more decorative days, please don't judge. And this was 2017. And then I was in an A6 rings, and this is my order tracking from the years I used that. Now you might wonder, why am I saving these things? Well, I don't save everything from my planners, but if I have, for example, a Hobonichi, and you'll see a number of those because that's what I was using for my scheduling and to do, I save the whole thing in case I want to go back and reference anything. Order pages I save because if I want to go back and see something that I ordered four years ago or five years ago, let's say I have a problem with something and I want to remember where I bought it and when I bought it and how much it was, things like that. If you're going to de-stash things later, it's always a good idea to know what you invested in something. So I have other years of Hobonichi use <laughs> and... The sad one, which is the one I bought for 2022, set it up and, you know, put all of my labels and everything in there and then stopped using it in January. <laughs> More Hobonichi. But that doesn't get all of what I want to archive. For the last two years, I've been doing my master list my to-dos, and my schedule in a mini HP. So this is my archive planner for that. I just take the pages and move them into here. The advantage to this is that my planner is not overloaded. I can get to it if I need to reference something, but I don't need to overstuff my planner. I find that if you're keeping too many things in your planner, you can't get to the good stuff. I know there's people out there, I know a lot of you do like to chunk up your planner, but it's a good idea to be intentional about what's in there so that you can get to what you really need to effectively plan. So most of my planning takes place in a half letter. And I did have a lot of loose pages in one of the archive boxes. And that's not very practical for trying to find something quickly because you've got to sort through the pages. So once I got this final planner, I thought, well, this is a great idea. I thought about just having a separate planner for this, but with the vinyl planner, it just seemed like a great idea. Now, a few things about the vinyl planner, just some tips that I've learned along the way. I've tried it with the three quarter inch discs, which you saw in my last video, and I'll have that linked up here. I decided if I was going to use this for archiving, I would need more room, so I wanted to use one inch discs. I loved the idea of using black. I had a set of black metallic one inch discs, and I loved the way the black detailing of the planner and that the way that looks. And then I did use some clear dividers with see-through black labels. So I thought that did a nice job of pulling the whole thing together. 
When I first set this up with the one inch discs, it didn't close properly. It was too short. And the reason was that the back cover was hitting this area right here. So all I did was I trimmed a little bit off of the back cover. Now I had told you already that if you're going to use the crystal clear, I did trim a little less than an eighth of an inch top and bottom of my back cover so that it was able to go in more easily. I have things from several different planners in here and I use the dividers to set up the area. So the first one is finance. I like to keep older things on finance so that I can look back over them. Jamie is uh, a coach that I use for advanced web design. And some of my older notes from Zoom calls with him are very helpful to me, but I don't need all of them in my work planner. For me, keeping the pages from expenses is essential. I want to go back and look at what I paid a contractor to do some work at my house three years ago when I'm calling him again to do something. I also have some of my older purchase pages in here from Half Letter. The next section I have is pages from my YouTube planner, and these are notes from past videos. I don't want to discard them, but I don't need them in my YouTube planner right now. I like to keep that really thin and easy to work with. So my feeling about setting this up is if I made it attractive in this planner, I would want to be more diligent about using it. What I decided to do is I took one of the cloth and paper dashboards that we received in a sub box so that you can't see my first page in there um, which happens to be some financial notes. I made a new dashboard and I printed this one on acetate. If you're going to use my freebie dashboard, you'll get a PDF that looks like this. There are some faint trim marks, which you'll use your paper trimmer for, and it'll cut it down to size. I have several sizes available, and then if you need a size that's not on there, you'll get a hold of me, and I'll do my best to accommodate you. Here's my best hack for trimming a printable. Trim this way, trim this way. Make a partial cut going here, and then trim the top part. Then when you come back, you've already started this, because otherwise you wind up eliminating the crop marks when you trim up here. You could also print this on vellum, and you can obviously layer things. So you could print it on plain vellum, this is on a printed vellum. It's white dots on a vellum. And as you can see, I was experimenting with the placement. If I were to use this, I probably would not have anything behind it uh, because the dots will hopefully obscure what's there. So I've got lots of room in here and I'm actually going through some of my other planners and pulling pages to put in here. If you do print out the dashboard on acetate, it's very hard to see the crop lines. What I suggest is putting a piece of white paper or the divider paper that comes with the acetate underneath while you're trimming so that you can see those trim marks. I have links below to my suggestion for the acetate and vellum and also my favorite trimmer. I started out with an inkjet printer and I was using an inkjet transparency for the acetate. When I moved to a laser printer, I tried it and it seems to work fine, so I have not adjusted because I've been very happy. Here's one of my most important tips that I'm going to give you in this video. If you decide to print the dashboard on acetate, you can print it and trim it and then let it sit for a while. Because I have punched it very soon after printing it and it wound up jamming my heavy-duty Levenger punch, which goes through everything. I finally figured out that it was because the heat in the printer was doing something to the acetate that made it not as rigid. I let it sit for a couple of hours before I punched it, and I've had no problems since. I'm sending an email out to my email subscriber group tonight with the dashboard. If you're not already signed up, there's a link below. I have three questions. Number one, do you archive? Number two,
do you think this system would work for you if you don't already archive? And number three, did you get one of these vinyl planners? Let me know in the comments. I love seeing your comments. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time around.